harmony with y'all. But they said, come on, come on, y'all, come on. You are Alpha, you are Alpha, you are Alpha.
Well, good morning, good Sunday morning. We praise God for allowing us to be in the house which is called by his name, that we might worship him in spirit and in truth. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Our God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. And we bless the name of our God all over this land and country as he has afforded us another opportunity to come by way of Facebook Live and YouTube as well as other platforms throughout the world. We praise God for all of the church community that has come on the air to give God glory and to give God praise for he is worthy to be praised. I wonder if I have any witnesses in your living room in your home, in the comforts of your home that can put your hands together and give God praise even while you're there. Amen. Because the church is not closed. It's restricted to mass assembly, but it's not closed because the people of God are the church and we are scattered abroad everywhere sharing the good news of our God for he is worthy to be praised. Come on, when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you, you ought to cry out hallelujah and you ought to thank God for saving you for he is worthy of the praise Reverend Martin is going to come now with scripture and following him Reverend Eugene Johnson is going to come with prayer and then we'll turn you over to our praise leaders Amen I'll be reading in your hearing from the 125th number of Psalms. And it says, Those who trust in the Lord uh -huh. are secure as Mount Zion. They will not be defeated, but will endure forever. Just as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds the people, both now and forever. The wicked will not rule the land of the godly, for the godly might be tempted to do wrong. Yes. O oh Lord, do good to those who are good, whose hearts are in tune with you. I read for you from the 125th number of Psalms, verses 1 through 4. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. My God, my Lord, my Savior, my Healer, my King of Kings, yes. and my Lord of Lords. Yes. Lord, you are my everything. Yes. God, we come to you today, Lord, just to first of all say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for keeping us and saving us, oh God. Thanking you for, Lord, keeping us from getting the virus that's going around, God. Jesus. Lord, you have protected us and shielded us with the your blood, God, you have shielded us and kept us and strengthened us, Lord, and given us the right mind to do the right things at the right time, God. And Lord, we thank you for it right now, God. Lord, we come to praise yes, and lift up yes, your holy yes, and righteous yes, name. Yes. Lord, because you're yes, so worthy, yes, God, you're yes, so worthy. Yes. Lord, you have gotten our attention. If we did, you didn't have it before, you got it now. God, you just show Lord, us and prove Lord. to us that you are God yes. and there's none beside you. And Lord, we just worship you, Lord. We know yes. that, Lord, this shows us that you are still and forever will yes. be in control. God, this is your world, not our world. This is your world, God. You are in control of it. Lord, bless all of those that have saved and know you as a personal savior. And for those that don't know you, God, help them come to the reality yes. of the truth. Lord, bless this day, oh God. Bless this word that's going to come forth today, God. Oh God, strengthen those that are sick, oh God. Lift them up, Lord. Strengthen them and heal them supernaturally, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, name of oh God. Jesus. All those that are home right now, God. Oh God, be with them, Lord. Keep them, Lord. Keep them from any hurt, harm, or danger. Jesus. Lord, we pray and give you the thanks, Lord, and lift you up for all men to see and be drawn unto you. And Lord, these blessings we give in your mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen.
know that he is God. above all gods and he is worthy of praise he's worthy of worship he's worthy of adoration he's worthy of all of it and I pray and hope that you are giving God glory all over the place we thank God for our praise leaders today thank God for their energy their enthusiasm thank you for their infectious spirit and we pray that you 
who are listening to us, who are looking at us by way of Facebook Live and even uh, YouTube are being blessed by what you're hearing and that you're joining in in the praise as we give God glory and give him thanks. Yes. Want to say to our beloved Greater St. John members in particular, we miss you, we love you, we're praying for you, we hope that you are in health even as your soul prospers. We know that we're going to get through this. At some point, we'll come back together. But in the meantime, we still have to be the church. And we still have to give God glory for he is worthy of the praise. Praise the Lord. Will you bow your head for me just a moment? Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for another opportunity to stand to present your word to your people. I ask you now what I've asked aforetime and that you will use my mind, my mouth, and my mannerism you may be magnified in this moment that the seed of your word will fall on good ground and bring forth fruit that will remain that you will convict us of sin challenge us to change and compel us to a closer walk with you that you might receive glory we pray for the sick everywhere we pray that you will allow them to rise up and recover we pray for those that are lost they may come to know you in a life-changing way we pray for those that are discouraged, disappointed, that you will give them delight and give them a reason to hold their head up. God, I pray that you'll bless every church that's open in your name today. We pray that the word will go forth with power and not return to you void, that it may accomplish that which you have sent it out to accomplish. God, we pray you be glorified this day. We know, God, that we are in a temporary situation. We know that it, we don't know how long it's going to last, but we do know that you will outlast it and that you will cause us to outlast it as well. And we hang on to your promise. We thank you, Lord, for it all. In the precious, powerful, and preeminent name, Jesus, our Christ, we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen and amen. You have your Bibles. I want to invite your attention today to a familiar yet fresh passage of Scripture found in the book of Romans, the book of Romans chapter 8, the book of Romans chapter 8, and I want to focus our attention, our energies on verse 28, uh, the book of Romans chapter 8. I know all of you yes. know it, you are familiar with it, you've read it before, but I pray that you allow the Holy Spirit to speak even further to you. To this verse even though it is a familiar passage of scripture uh, the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 20 to 8 says and we know, and we know. Yes, that sir. God causes everything to work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose yes. and we know yes. that all things work together for good Hallelujah. to them that love God and yes, to those yes, sir. Who are the called yes, according yes, to his purpose. Yes, Amen. Amen. I want to tag this text this morning and talk with you briefly from this thematic thrust. It's all good. Yes, sir. Yes, it's sir. All, good. all good. Will you tell somebody in your vicinity it's all good? Whether it's here in the sanctuary or wherever you might be, tell them it's all good. It's all, it's all good. The story is told of a father who purchased his son a gift for his birthday. This particular gift was a picture puzzle. Some of the pieces of this puzzle were dark, some were bright, some seemed to go together and others seemed to fit nowhere. The young man had become frustrated as he sought to put this puzzle together. He had exhausted every avenue he knew. The boy was so frustrated after a while that he gathered all of the pieces of the puzzle, put them back in the box, and went to his father, gave it back to his dad and said, thanks dad, but no thanks. I tried to do it, but I cannot do it, you try it. Yeah. The father took that same box, took it to the table where the young boy had been earlier, poured those same pieces on the table. 
And in a matter of minutes, the father was able to put the puzzle together without problem. This young boy was so amazed, he was intrigued, he was flabbergasted, he was confused because he did not understand how his father was able to put the pieces together so quickly while at his attempt he failed miserably. He said, Dad, how is it that you were able to do this? He says, well, the reason I was able to do it is because I was looking at the picture while you were looking at the pieces. He says, I was able to put it together because the pieces can confuse you, but the picture can give you confidence. Yes, sir. My brothers and sisters, I've discovered in times like these that it gets difficult when we look at situations piece by piece, but when we look at the full picture, we have confidence that things will work out for our good. Yes, yes, yes. This particular pericope passage of scripture found at the very heart of Romans chapter eight is one that gives us confidence that we can trust in the provisions of God no matter what's happening around us. Uh, this passage, uh, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Uh, it is in the very heart of the same chapter that says in verse 1 there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit this is the same passage that's found in the same chapter that tells us that we don't know how to pray as we ought but the spirit itself or himself makes intercession for us with groanings that are too deep for words it's in the same chapter where we find in verse 18 where G Paul says yet the suffering that we now have is but for a moment but the glory of it will be revealed later on he says I reckon that the present sufferings of this very moment are not even worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us it's in the same chapter where we're told in verse 37, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Uh, it, because he tells us that we have confidence that the love of God, nothing can separate us from it. And I thank God that even in this passage, he says to us that God has a way of working things out for your good. Uh, we live in some uncertain times. We live in times of unrest. We live in times that cannot be predicted. We live in times that have not been planned. We live in times that pain us. Even though we are Christians, even though we have faith, even though we love God, even though we worship him exclusively, there are times in our lives we wonder whether we're going to make it. We wonder whether things are going to turn out all right we wonder whether or not we're going to remain on our feet we wonder whether or not the sun will continue to shine we wonder whether or not the foundation under us will be stable again but when you are a child of God when you are a child in the Christ when you are a child that know who he is you can have the confidence that no matter what's going on around me God says it's going to work out for my good and since God God says it's going to work out for my good. I have no other recourse but to trust that God knows what he says. God knows what he can do and I can deposit it in my heart to know that God will make a way out of no way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the, the text tells us three things essentially and the first thing that Paul seeks to tell us is that we can be certain about his promise. For he says in verse 28 and we know which means not only do we know, but we can know, that we ought to know, that there are some things we should know. Uh, when you are in the Lord, you know certain things that others don't know. He, he says you can be certain about his promise. He says to us that this is a promise that God has made to his people. 
And when God makes a promise, he is not a man that he should lie. Nor is he the son of man that he needs to repent. If he said it, will he not do it? If he spoke it, will he not make it good? God says through the apostle Paul to the church at Corinth that all the promises of God are yea and amen. And so Paul with the same confidence, with the same charisma says to the church at Rome there are some things we ought to know if we don't know anything else. We may not know how many people are sick. We may not know how many people are hungry. We may not know how many people are in dire straits. We we may not know the economy we may not know the stock market we may not know science we might not know literature or history but there is something that we all all know and that is that all things work together for our good he said we ought to be certain about his promise but not only can we be certain about his promise he says we should also count on his provisions for he says, and we know that all things work together for good. All things work together for good. This words, the words work together is the word sunageo in the Greek. It is derived from the English word, from we get our English word synergism. And synergism is the working uh, together of various elements that are designed to produce an even greater effect together than they would apart. Uh, they are oftentimes different from one another. Uh, they are the sum of each element acting separately. And so what happens, God has a way of putting together things that don't seem on the surface to fit together, but he allows their coming together to work out for our good. So it could be good or bad. It could be sweet or bitter. It could be victory or defeat. It could be happy moments or sad times. It could be health or sickness. It could be prosperity or poverty. It could be the calm or the storm. It could be comfort or suffering. It could be life or death. It doesn't matter. God has a way of bringing stuff together that otherwise would come together so that they could work for our good. A lot of us like salt on our food. Oh yeah, we, we like salt. In fact, we like salt so much that whenever we are served dinner, before we even taste the food, we're asking for the salt shaker. Uh, when we go to a fine restaurant for steak, we go and before we even taste the steak, we want to know if you got any steak sauce. Uh, when we go to a restaurant and get some fries, we, 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 before we even taste the fries to see if they're right, we're asking for the ketchup. When we go to another restaurant and ask for chicken or, or, or some or greens or whatever soul food you can think of, one of the first thing you ask for is, do you have any hot sauce? Because we have been trained to put stuff on our food without even tasting the food first. You don't even know if the food need it. You just know that based upon your history, I'm used to having salt. I'm used to having hot sauce. I'm used to having barbecue sauce. I'm used to having vinegar and whatever else you add before I even taste it. But I mentioned salt because salt is probably the more common of them all. Because oftentimes we've heard that salt has a way of waking up food flavor. Yes. That when the food is bland or tasteless, if you just put a little salt on it, things will come out all right. But did you not know that salt is the combination of two poisons? Uh, sodium and chlorine. Uh, each of them, if you would take them separately, will cause you harm. But somehow, when they put sodium and chlorine together, the two tag team in an effort to wake up your food flavor. Yeah. Do I have a witness in here? Yeah. And all I'm trying to tell you is that there are some things in your life that if you had to deal with them one-on-one, -on -one, you would never make it. But because God has a way of weaving stuff together that otherwise wouldn't come together for your good, it makes it all happen That's the good. same. That's 
God wants us to know that in this life, he has a way of providing that for us, that all things that work together for our good. Uh, Daniel had to know that because Daniel was one who was a man of excellent spirit who, stead, who stood head and shoulders above the rest. Daniel was a man who prayed three times a day. Daniel was a man who was snitched on by his co-workers because he violated the decree of Darius. Uh, Daniel was one who did not stop praying even though it wasn't popular at the time. He prayed three times a day and he would open his chamber to the city so that his prayer would go through. The time came when the report came to the king that Daniel was violating the prayer decree. Daniel didn't care. Daniel understood that it was the same God that took care of him that he had to pray to. Well, and as a consequence of his actions, the Bible tells us that Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. Do I have a witness here? Daniel was in the lion's den and the Bible, the record is that Daniel ended up going to sleep while in the midst of ferocious lions because he believed that the same God that took care of him outside of the lion's den is the same God that can take care of him inside the lion's den. Do I have a witness in here? In other words, he's saying to us that God has a way of providing what we need just when we need it. And when you got the confidence in God's provision, you know that God will show up when it matters the most. Yes, Do I have a witness here? Well, maybe that didn't excite you. Maybe if I called Joseph to testify. Joseph would tell you, I was a young son. I was a favorite son. I had some jealous siblings, all because I told them I had a dream that concerned my being in authority. They were upset that my father gave me a coat of many colors. They tried to get rid of me because every time they saw me, I kept telling them about a dream that I had. Joseph would tell you that I was excited about God's purpose and plan for my life. Well, but little did I know that my brothers were not equally excited. And so they got rid of me. They tried to sell me to some caravans. They tried to throw me in a ditch. They threw me in a pit to leave me to die. Well, but that, like thanks be to God, provision was made that I ended up going from the pit to Potiphar's house. And while I was at Potiphar's house, I was put in charge of the whole household, everything except his wife. And the very thing that I wasn't put in charge of really wanted me real bad. She solicited me. She, she made passes at me. She tried to proposition me, but I turned it flat down. Do I have a witness here? He says, as a result of turning it down, I still ended up in prison because she told her husband, Husband, I tried to take it and I got his coat as exhibit A but how can I tell you God allowed me to be in charge even in the prison because the butler and the baker from the king's palace was also there and they both had dreams that they had trouble interpreting and so the Bible tells us that Daniel helped them to interpret their dream he told one of them well your life is over as you know it and he told the other you're going to be restored back to the king and the one he told you're going to be restored back to the king ended up going back to the king and forgot all about Joseph but can I tell you there was one person that didn't forget about Joseph and that was God himself do I have a witness here because even though time went by and Joseph was languishing in prison God had a plan to get him out because uh, the Pharaoh had a dream himself. Do I have a witness here? The king had a dream himself and he needed somebody to interpret his dream and he remembered there's a man I met that was behind the bars that told me he can interpret dreams. Maybe he can interpret yours. They sent 
for him and brought him to the king's palace. He interpreted the king's dream and ended up being the secretary of agriculture. Do I have a witness here? He was second only to the king. If you read the thread that makes its way through the tapestry of Joseph's life, it says, and the Lord was with Joseph and he prospered in everything that he did. Do I have a witness here? All I'm trying to tell you that is if you're in the will of God, he'll make a way for you to prosper. When you're in the will of God, he'll prosper, you will provide your every need. When you're in the will of God, he'll turn situations in your favor. When you're in the will of God, he'll make your heart laugh and make your soul happy. When you're in the will of God, he'll give you just what you need do I have a witness here I'm here to tell you that you can be certain about his promise yes you can count on his provision but you can be clear about his purpose have I got a witness here he said and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose do I have a witness here the larger trajectory of this particular passage it tells us first of all that the Lord wants to save you if there anybody here that don't know Jesus you need to get to know him because your soul hang in the palace and death is around the corner you need Jesus in your life if you were to die this very day where would you spend eternity do I have a witness here I don't know about you but I know that I'm saved is there anybody here that can shout I'm saved his purpose is that you be saved his purpose is that you be sanctified set aside for God's use his purpose is that his spirit reside in you his purpose is that he get glory out of your life do I have a witness here his purpose is that you be set aside for him to use but not only does he want to save you and not only does he want to sanctify you but he wants you to serve this present age your calling to fulfill may it all my powers engage just to do my master's will is there anybody that want to serve him he's worthy to be served didn't the psalmist says make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know you that the Lord he is God it is he that have made us not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pastor have I got a witness here he wants us to be conformed to the image of his son do I have a witness and when you've been conformed to the image of his son and when you got Jesus at the heart of it all it's all good come what may day to day it's all good high mountains low valleys it's all good employment unemployment it's all good sickness disease and health is all good is there anybody that know that is all good can I tell you why I shout can I tell you why I'm saved can I tell you why I'm sanctified can I tell you why I serve it's because of the Savior he died on an old rugged cross didn't he die he died for you and for me but it was early 
Sunday morning, I said early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with all power in his hand. You can't shake nobody's hand, but just wave at him and tell him, I know it's all good. You can't fist pump nobody. Maybe you can elbow pump him and tell him it's all good. You can't hug him, but you can tell him it's all good because this joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Blessed, I said blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm trying to quit, but my soul didn't got happy. Do I have a witness here? I'm thanking God every day I could have been one of them I could have been all of them but his grace his grace his grace his grace yeah 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 It's all good. And we know in all things all things all things all things work together for good for them that love God and to those who are the call yes, according to his purpose yes, I can be certain about his promise I can count on his provision hallelujah I'm clear about his promise his purpose for my life if you're here today or in radio land or cyberspace, virtual reality, wherever you might be. And you don't know that for yourself. You can know it. Without a shadow of a doubt. Without a shred of uncertainty. You can know that just like he's brought us through past seasons, he can bring us through this one. You just got to trust God. You got to do it more so now you've ever done it in your life. Because while we've had situations and circumstances similar to what we are experiencing, this one has taken on a nature of its own. And it's more subtle and more sinister than either, any of us could know. But we know somebody who is sovereign. Yes, sir. Yes. God is sovereign. Yes, he is. He can do what no other power can do. And if we will put our trust in him, he promised he would bring us through. And I want you to hold on, hold to his hand. Trust him, believe him. And know that everything will work out if you put your trust in him. If you're listening to me via Facebook Live or YouTube, and you don't know Jesus in the part of your sin, you can't know him. You ought to know him. Today will be a good day to make your acquaintance. Today will be a good day to know his purpose for your life. Today will be a good day to know that you can be clear about his purpose, certain about his promise, and that you can count his provision. Now, if you're here today, if you're out there, wherever you might be, trust him now. You are listening and you are one of those persons that I'm speaking specifically to. Then just bow your heads with me for just a moment. And just tell the Lord, Lord, and mention your name. I need you right now. I recognize that it took the current circumstances to bring me to this point. But I'm so glad I finally got here. Lord, take control of my life. 
Use me as you see fit. Do what you want to do with me. Consecrate me. Commission me. I want to serve you the balance of my days. I know I haven't always done things right, and I still got some things about me that's not quite right. I thank you for your unconditional love. Fill me with your spirit. Animate me for your purpose that I might bring glory to your name. And God, as I pray, I pray for those that are struggling with any ailment or sickness, any circumstance that seem to be impossible. Touch them now, God. Allow them to know that there is a reality in serving a true and living God. And we forever give your name praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank God. Amen. personal decision
I'm Pastor Andre A. McGee of the Greater St. John Missionary Baptist Church of South Bend, Indiana. Wanted to greet our fellow members, my beloved Greater St. John Church family. We know that we are in a crisis now with this COVID-19, also known as coronavirus, uh, circulating and paralyzing our country, our communities. Many people are torn as to whether or not we should have church or council church but I feel it's in the best interest of the preservation and the protection of our members that we shut the building of Greater St. John down for the next two weeks. Now that does not mean that the church is closed. We still have to be the church. We still have to do the work of the church. And so we encourage you to help us continue our mission. Obviously this is a very difficult time for all of us and so we're praying that you trust God, that you continue to rely on his word, that you seek his wisdom, but also that you protect yourselves by staying home, practicing social distancing, uh, washing your hands, refusing to touch your face, particularly your eyes, nose, and mouth, so that you can stay as healthy as you possibly can. We're also asking that uh, during the course of this time that you continue to support your church as you have always in the past, particularly in the area of your financial responsibility. Uh, while we won't be here the next two weeks, the work of the church will continue and it will require monetary resources. So we encourage you to, you can either go to our website, greaterstjohnmbc.com, you can use the PayPal tab, you can download the Giveify app to your smartphone and give via Giveify. You can also use our cash app uh, to support the church or if you'd like somebody to come by and pick it up, please communicate that in the office. The number is 574 232-6700, or you could even mail your donations to the church. You can do that by mailing your donations to 101 North Adams Street, South Bend, Indiana. As I aforementioned, uh, we'll be shut down, but the secretary will be in the office on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The hours will be from 8 to 12, so if you wish to come by at any time to do drop off your financial contributions, you can do so. Uh, if you need further services from the church, because we know that some people will probably be sick or shut in or need prayer or counseling, we will make ourselves available. Please let that be known by calling our church office. In the meantime, be encouraged. It pains me. I understand how you must feel to not have access to your church for the next couple of weeks. Believe me, if it was up to me, we would have church, but it's not about me. It's about us. We want to make sure that we're all preserved and protected. So we look forward to seeing you. Uh, we look forward to this passing, this pandemic passing soon because God is powerful and we must continue to keep our trust in him. God bless you.